I have been meaning to do this for such a long time, ever since I received Alia Siri's first poetry anthology, a poem for every day of the year. I thought it would be really nice if I rekindled the poetry reading videos that I used to do and start doing a, a series of reading poems for relaxation purposes. And I thought the best thing would be to start going through this. This, as the name of the book suggests, presents one poem. I might not read every single poem, but I will pick out the ones that I think are my favourites. And I won't do any talking in between the poems. But if you buy the book, you'll also delight in these little snippets. My fingers look filthy. I dyed my hair last night, so it's still little snippets of information about the day or the poem. So I won't read those out, but I will read the poems. And I definitely recommend you get a copy of this. If you have any suggestions for poems you would like me to read, please let me know. Infant Joy by William Blake I have no name. I am but two days old. What shall I call thee? I am happy. Joy is my name. Sweet joy before thee. Pretty joy. Sweet joy, but two days old. Sweet joy, I call thee. I sing the while. Sweet joy before thee. An extract from Twelfth Night by William Shakespeare. When that I was, and a little tiny boy, When he, ho, the wind and the rain, Foolish thing was but a toy, for the rain it raineth every day. But when I came to man's estate, with hey ho, the wind and the rain, against knaves and thieves men shut their gate, for the rain it raineth every day. But when I come, alas, to wife, with hey ho, the wind and the rain, with toss pots still at drunken heads, for the rain, it raineth every day. A great while ago the world begun with hey ho, the wind and the rain. But that's all one, our play is done, and we'll strive to please you every day. Life by Charlotte Bronte. Life, believe, is not a dream, so dark as sages say. Oft a little morning rain foretells a pleasant day. Sometimes there are clouds of gloom, but these are transient all. If the shower will make the roses bloom, oh why lament its fall? Rapidly, merrily, life's sunny hours flit by. Gratefully, cheerily, enjoy them as they fly. What though death at time steps in, and calls our best away. What though sorrow seems to win, or hope a heavy sway. Yet hope again elastic springs, unconquered though she fell. Still buoyant are her golden wings, so strong to bear us well. Manfully, fearfully, the day of trial will bear. For gloriously, victoriously, can courage dwell despair. Spot that I said fearfully instead of fearlessly. Science by Edgar Allan Poe. Science, true daughter of old time thou art, who alters all things with thy prying eyes. Why prayest thou thus upon the poet's heart? Vulture, whose wings are dull realities. How should he love thee, or how deem thee wise? Who wouldst not leave him in his wandering? to seek for treasures in the jeweled skies, albeit he saw it with an undaunting wing. Hast thou not dragged Diana from her car, and driven the Hamadriad from the wood, to seek a shelter in a happier star? 
Hast thou not torn the naiad from her flood, the elfin from the green grass, and from me the summer dream beneath the tamarind tree? An extract from I Have a Dream by Martin Luther King Jr. I say to you today, my friends, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out of the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day, even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the colour of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day down in Alabama, with its vicious racists, with its governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullification, one day, right here in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and little white girls as brother and sisters. I have a dream today. I have a dream. This is our hope. This is the faith that I go back to the South with. Let freedom ring. Allow freedom to ring from every mountainside, from every peak, from every village and hamlet. We will be able to join hands and sing. Free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. I'll tell you how the sun rose by Emily Dickinson. I'll tell you how the sun rose, a ribbon at a time. The steeples swam in amethyst, the news like squirrels ran. The hills untied their bonnets, the bobolinks begun. Then I said softly to myself, that must have been the sun. But how he set, I know not. There seemed a purple style, which little yellow boys and girls were climbing all the while. Till when they reached the other side, a domine in grey put gently up the evening bars and led the flock away. A colossal glossary by Paul Muldoon. The aardvark's a kind of anteater, an earth pick in Dutch, while abracadabra is a charm much favoured by alchemists, as for that wine-coloured gem, the amethyst. A Greek would place it in his cup so as not to be drunk, a thought no foul-mouthed Anglo-Saxon ever thunk. Azure is the blue of lapis lazuli, the bandicoot is a rat from Australasia, that likes to browse or graze on the tender shoots of rice, a carbon copies, a replica, but only once or twice. Yellow or green, the chartreus is a liquor, distilled as always by monks. The kaibu's prize is its fur, not so the wild dog or dingo, an alien's an African antelope. In medical lingo, an epiglottis is a tongue, an esophagus a gizzard. A glitch would be a snag or hazard. The ibex is a mountain goat, i.e. is short for a dest. In Latin, that is. A pain in the side was once a jade. A word which we now use, the greenish stone, deep the mend the stitch. A genet might be a jade. In the horse sense, soldiers in khaki uniforms tense when they hear the siren song of a klaxon, since it almost always represents a call to action. The lagoon is a shallow lake, usually on the coast. The nocturnal lemur is essentially a ghost. A lilo is a rubber raft, while a limousine is a vehicle whose occupants thankfully can't be seen, since they're often types who say moi for me, and have a penchant for drinking sparkling mongoose pee. Whipped cream is the main ingredient of mousse, the novel relies on its tusk when hunting Eskimos. Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon, 
for whom the writing on the wall was plain, as plain as could be, a nicety may be the subtle or idle distinction, as such is its own rebuttal. The oryx, like all gazelles, is thought by lions to wallow in self-pity, and osier is a type of willow. A pickle is anything preserved in vinegar or brine, as one pine opinioned, one pine opined to another pinch pine. He that touches pine shall be defiled, though pitch more commonly refers to asphalt. The root of prehensile is prehendere to seize. You may already have grasped that a quagga is a wild ass. The ruble and ruby are Russian and Indian coins, so to, to be scrupulous is to have qualms and conscience. From scrupulous, a stone with a cutting edge, the reed with a razor sharp blade is a sedge. Tamburlaine, also known as Tamburlaine or Timur, was a Mongol king whose deportment was anything but demure, his stock in trade being rapine and reprisal. The tapir lives as a hermit in a rainforest of Brazil, where it meditates on theology. In the beginning was the war. In the beginning of the <laughs> In the beginning was the world, and the word was algae. A no less apic theologian which was Thomas Torquemade. His cruel stake ran the gamut, from burning at the stake through hanging by a gaff to the flaying of some fattened divinity calf, all in the name of truth and justice. On the subject of the thrice great Hermes Tri Trismegistus, or his Lord Lieutenant Zoroaster, my lips are sealed. I will say this, a trundle, it's a castor. After mistaken for a llama or an alpaca, the new Sean Vichuna spits at the thought of the Norseman, or Viking, who stole the shirt off his back. The chief sense of winnow is to fan, to separate the wheat from the chaff. The sheep from the goats, good from evil. It's hard to categorise, say low, forgot, this wood boring weevil. It makes of something, nothing, silk, just as a worm may contain an armada, little much, all the meanings of all the rest. Of the words in this book are buried in one, a treasure chest. To a mouse, by Rabbi Burns. We sleek it, Corin, timorous beastie. Oh, what a panic's in thy breastie. Thou needn't start, oh, I say hasty, with bicker and brattle. Oh, I'd be late to run and chase thee, with mother and battle. I'm truly sorry man's dominion, his broken nature's social union, it justifies that ill opinion. Which makes thee startle at me, thy poor earthborn companion and fellow mortal. I doubt now, whiles, but thou may thieve. What then, poor beastie, thou mun live, a demonicker in a thrive. <laughs> so as my request, I'll get a blessing with a live, and may I miss it. The wee bit hoosy to and ruin, it's silly was the winds are strewn, and Nathan now to big a new in, a fog a green, fog a green. In bleak December's winds and seen, bathed snow and keen. Thou saw the fields lay bare and waste, and weary winter coming fast, and cosy here beneath the blast thou thought to dwell, till crash the cruel coulter passed uh, through thy cell. That wee bit heap of leaves and stibble has cost thee money a weary nibble. Now thou'st turned it out for all thy trouble, but house or hall to all the winter's steety trouble. And crunch it called. But Moosey, thou art neither then. Improving foresight may be vain. The best laid schemes of mice and men, gang after glee. And lay us out not but grief and pain for promised joy. So thou art blessed compared with me, the present only touches thee. But ugh, I backward cast my eye on prospects drear, and forward though I cannot see. Guess and fear.